So now let's talk about how molecules can move from one side of the membrane to the other. So remember, molecules are going to have kinetic energy, which is energy of motion, right? So they're going to be moving a little bit, pretty much, unless if they're in a solid and then they're not really moving that much. And what's going to happen is that kinetic energy is going to kind of help to determine how they move across the membrane. So I'm going to draw a little picture here for you. Okay, so let's say that we have a um, membrane right here. And we've got a whole bunch of <clears throat> molecules on one side of the membrane and just a few on the other. So if you think about it, what way do you think the molecules are going to move? Do you think they're going to move from left to right or do you think they're going to move from right to left? I'll tell you, those are your only choices, so think about it. Um, and hopefully what you're thinking is that they are going to go from left to right. How long are they going to do that? They're going to do that until they reach equilibrium, which means there's equal amounts on both sides. So that's going to be the process of diffusion. So we can say that these molecules are going from an area of high concentration to low, right? That's exactly what they're doing. Now, <clears throat> the way I think about it is it's like a little slide, right? Um, so here you are, we going down the slide, yay. Um, so with gravity, right, it's natural for you to go like that. And you are going from high to low. So that's going to be how diffusion works, high concentration to low concentration. So we'll come back to that idea in a little bit. <clears throat> The um, third point about it is that every substance is going to go down its own concentration gradient. So going back to our little chalkboard here. Um, <clears throat> so if I were to redraw, that is the worst membrane ever. Okay. If I was going to redraw all of these guys like this, and we said they are going to go from left to right. Now, <clears throat> if I was going to start drawing some O's in a different color, these guys are going to go from right to left because they're going down their own concentration gradient. Like, their high concentration is here and it's low over here, right? So the red ones don't care what the purple ones are doing, right? They're on their own concentration gradient. So that's going to be really important to remember as we go through all of this stuff. All right, so diffusion, by definition, is going to be moving molecules down their concentration gradient, which you can think of, it's like um, going down a slide, right? So it's going to go from um, high concentration to low concentration. Okay, <clears throat> now getting across a membrane is not easy, depending on what type of molecule you are. And so we say that membranes are selectively permeable. So when you're selective about something, that means you're not taking everything, right? And permeable means allowing stuff to come through. So selectively permeable means that they'll allow some things to come through, but they're going to leave other things out. And um, the example I give, it's just like a window screen, right? A window screen is going to allow you to let like air and a breeze through, but it's not going to allow you to let insects and all of that kind of stuff go through, right? So if you want something to go across the membrane very easily, they usually have to be pretty small molecules or hydrophobic or nonpolar molecules. And the reason for that is because there's that big section in the middle of the membrane that's nonpolar, so they won't be able to get through that if they're not nonpolar. <clears throat> All right, so there's going to be two types of movement in a cell. The first type is going to be what's called passive transport. So when you're passive about something, you're not really putting any energy into it, right? So passive transport, the main important thing is it does not require any energy. And it's going to be when you diffuse from high to low because that doesn't require any energy. That's the natural flow that we talked about earlier. So <clears throat> there's a couple of different forms of it. First one is diffusion, and diffusion is just something going from high to low, like I showed you in that previous picture. Then we've got osmosis, and osmosis is just a fancy name for when water diffuses across a membrane. So water can go from high to low as well. <clears throat> and so I always give the example of when I taught middle school, and um, I had them bring in gummy bears, and they put their gummy bears into a big glass of water. And then we let it sit overnight. Now, if you think about it, if they're in a glass of water, there's more water outside the gummy bear than inside. And so what's going to happen is the water is going to go from high to low. And so when we showed up the next day, the gummy bears were huge. And the kids wanted to eat them, which is weird. But anyway, um, it actually was a great way to show how osmosis works, right? Okay, 
So the last type is one that gives people a little bit of an issue, and that's facilitated diffusion. Now let's think about what facilitating means. When you facilitate something, you help it, right? So it's diffusion with a little bit of extra help. Still no energy being used, right? <clears throat> so facilitated diffusion is when you have a molecule that wants to get across the membrane, but it's either too big or it's polar or something like that. And so what's going to happen is you're going to have a transport protein that's going to help it. So if we were to draw our cell right here and um, something, you know, a little molecule wants to get across the membrane, if we have a little transport protein right here, it can actually go through the transport protein and get in there. That's facilitated diffusion. And that would be occurring if there was like a whole bunch of these guys out here and just like one or two inside here, right? So they're going from high to low, they just need to go through a transport protein to do it, okay? So <clears throat> that's all going to be um, examples of passive transport. Okay. So, a um, couple of things. Transport proteins, when we talk about facilitated diffusion, which is that last one, they're going to be specific for the molecule they're moving. So, they're not going to move any other types of molecules other than the one they're designed to move across the membrane. The other thing that you want to remember is that it is passive. It does not require any energy. It's just finding a little place to go through the membrane. Okay, let's move on to active transport. <clears throat> So active transport is going to use energy, and the form of energy is going to be ATP, okay? And so what's going to happen is it's going to use that energy to go against the flow. So if you think about it, um, if we go back to the example of um, you being on the slide, all right, let me get this all set. Okay, so we have our slide, and you slid down it, right? So if you're down here, and you want to go back up the slide, you are going to be using a lot of energy, right? It's not going to be as easy as it was to just slide down the slide, right? And that's because you're going against the flow. You're going from low all the way up to high. That's exactly how active transport is going to work, okay? So <clears throat> what's gonna happen with active transport is you are going to have, let's say, um, a situation where we have a whole bunch of molecules inside the cell and just a couple of them on the outside. So they are going to have a low concentration here and it's high in here. So what's going to happen is these guys want to go against the flow and so they're going to have to use ATP in order to do that. Okay, That's going to be active transport. Now there's another type called coupled transport. And coupled transport is kind of based on the similar idea, except what's going to happen is, um, let's say that there are these like purple ones, and just a couple of them out here. And what's going to happen is these purple ones are going to go from high to low, and as they are exiting, they're going to give off a little ATP. So what can happen with coupled transport is this guy up here can actually use that ATP to get in. That's the source of their ATP is using this little one from that gradient. Okay. So in each case, though, the more important thing that you want to get out of that is that you are using ATP, right? Each time you're using ATP. Okay. In the next video, we'll talk about osmosis and our cells and what kind of state our cells want to be in.